Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor. On this week's show, we're going to look ahead to the best of the action at Newmarket. Of course, it is future Champions Day, but also we have the jump season opener at Chepso live on Sky Sports Racing. I'm being joined, as you can see, in the studio by Declan Ricks. Looking very smart again, Ricksy. Yeah, every now and again, I <laughs> seem to pull a rabbit out of the hat, but you know, no, 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 uh, no match for you in the fashion stakes, Kate. No, I'm feeling very casual today in comparison to you. I've got my runners on and everything. So <laughs> That's no, all right. It's it's a kind of a casual time of year for ponting, I think. Mm. Oh, nice with, link with the with nice the old flats kind of coming to the end and the jump start, and it's tricky. But uh, well done last week. Thank you very much. Your nap went in, Tarmfana. Yes. We were all with her, but you get the you get the bonus points because it was the nap. So uh, a good shout. Well. Done. Yeah, like you say, all three of us were with Tamfana though. I mean, fortunately, she was my nap then. So I'm trying to compete with Sam Boswell in terms of a nap streak where we're going good guns at the minute, hoping to continue it at present. But speaking of Sam Boswell, though, he is not in the studio. He is zooming in then from Gibraltar. Sam, lovely yellow shirt. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was hoping it was a bit of a working holiday here in Gibraltar, but sadly the, the weather's not with us, so clearly I've, I've packed the conditions that we're not going to get. But yeah, big well done with your nap last week, Kate. I reckon that takes our collective strike rate back to around 66%, when you all agree. So let's see if we have uh, any agreement uh, with today's show. Yeah, hopefully we will have plenty more then to look forward to, but great Is, that you are... Zooming. Are you OK, Sam? Like, blink twice if you're being held captive. I'm getting that kind of vibe. <laughs> it, we've got very modern offices here, Deck, and for some reason it doesn't seem to do me any favour with the lighting, but there we go. We'll, oh, we'll battle on. Making up for it, though, with the shirt. So, yeah, Sam, we're just great that you are all happy that you're just with us all the same anyway and hoping to find us some more winning naps as well then from Sam this week. Now, before we get stuck into the action properly, a reminder, as ever, to please do gamble responsibly. Our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction. Right, we're going to kick start at Newmarket with the 115. This is the Group 3 Adali Stakes, three rods and over, over nine furlongs. Lead artist heads the way at 11 to 4 in this one but I'm going to side with your pal good old Liberty Lane I'm surprised no sentiment in this game is there for you no, <laughs> leaving I, him to one side I, I think on form he should be fa he should be favoured shouldn't he I was just I worried so. about having a tough run last time out because the first three or four furlongs in the Cambridgeshire were really strongly run and I'm just hoping it does it hasn't left a mark but he should be fab in my opinion yeah, that's the biggest concern, isn't it? Is that quick enough turnaround and if the ground is going to be quickening up then? Because we're having a look back at him at his penultimate start when he was second at Doncaster, off the same mark as last time out of 105, finishing just the next second. Now, this was just on ground that probably was a bit too quick for him, admittedly, but last time out, though, in the Cambridgeshire, when you could say this, yes, he had the draw bias, which completely swung against the usual <laughs> trends last time out, much to my frustration. But he definitely had the draw bias on that occasion. And of course, then positional bias, pace bias as well. But that's why I was kind of hoping lots of punters would look upon him and say, well, he got all of the advantages last time. Yeah. So I'm going to try and take him on now that he's up in grade into group company. I think that's why he's not favourite is mm. because of that slight doubt, which I would usually have. But in this instance, and I have to credit Andrew Mount for this. He actually said that horses who are on the downgrade in this Group 3 contest in recent renewals actually the, uh, don't have a good record. Those who are on the upgrade from listed or from handicap company have a positive record in it. So I'm hoping that Liberty Lane can prove himself once again, though, that he is therefore a group performer. So I will keep the sentiment rolling with Liberty Lane then in the Group 3. Darley sakes, do let us know in the comments se section below who you fancy for that one. Right, we're going to switch to the three o'clock now at Newmarket. This is the Group 1 Juha Stakes for the two year olds over seven furlongs. Our big one, of course, of the weekend. Aidan O'Brien seeking a ninth win in the race. He runs three here, headed by the favourite, the line in winter. Even money, Sam. Does that interest you or not? Yeah, Kate, it really does. I'm always supposed to take on these even money favourites, aren't I, working for a bookmaker? But I'm very keen on this horse's chances. And I, I think the most obvious thing to discuss with him is, is that run last time out of York. When you look through what's occurred since uh, the uh, the Acom effort, which was a really, I thought, a very impressive win, keeping on well. Comments afterwards, obviously, about going further, but they've opted to, to have one more run over the trip. But 
You've got the likes of Wimbledon Hawkeye, who was uh, a pretty good winner next time out at Newmarket in the Royal Lodge. That looks a decent, a decent enough yardstick of a race. Um, you know, go back through the Wacko Kid as well, has run well since. And I, I kind of just feel like there's enough there to suggest that the substance of that form is pretty strong. Uh, ground conditions is interesting, isn't it, I suppose? But I, I kind of don't feel like I've got any concerns. I think this will definitely suit. And I, I really am excited to see what this horse can achieve because I still think there's so much more untapped potential to come. Obviously, we've seen uh, market rivals, uh, Shadow of Light and Ancient Truth on, on, on more occasions so far. So, you know, that that is interesting, isn't it? Shadow of Light got a rating of 119, which is top rated in the field. But I think the unexposed nature of the line in winter has me very excited uh, to give Aidan O'Brien another win in this race. Even money for me, I think it's about right. Probably don't want to take odds on, but evens I thought was fair. There's actually a brilliant boxing fight on this weekend. Bivol has taken on Barbepe Betiev. I butchered that name, but it's an <laughs> it's absolute so belter if you're a boxing fan. I'm looking forward to that. But I think it's a, they say in boxing, styles make fights. And I think it's a very similar case here. You've got uh, the Lion in winter, who is going to be is a proven strong staying seven hur furlong horse, who will have absolutely no problem getting a mile of three, maybe even 10 furlongs and potentially maybe even 12. And then you've got Shadow of Light, who's a real speed horse, going from six furlongs up to seven. Uh, he was very good last time out in the middle park, but it was a really slowly run race and it suited him. He just had way too much classic. So it's a really fascinating um, uh, match up here. And you know, if I'm in charge at Bally Doyle, they've got three horses in there. I think uh, Rocky Cashman could potentially be used as a pacemaker. I am looking to drag the speed out of Symbol of Light in this yeah. race. I think they want a good, even, maybe even strong gallop here. Um, give uh, the Lion in Winter a good lead and just try and drag that class out of Symbol of Light. That's how I am envisaging the race. Um, Sam did mention there that it's going to be softer ground for um, the, in the Lion in Winter. I don't think this ground will be any excuse to him. His dam had plenty of form in soft ground and physically uh, he does look a little bit low to the ground. So I think he'll handle it no problem. But he was so good in the Aiken, wasn't he? He was a different horse because on debut with the Cora, he was green, he was clueless and the penny only dropped very late but you can see there look at that perfectly timed picture for us <laughs> you can see the sweat on his neck there everything about him in that race just suggested he sharpened up mentally and I think he's had 56 days to improve again, um, I'm hoping we might see something a little bit special but it is interesting, the shadow of light being in here, because straight after last time out, Charlie Appleby said, no, he's a Commonwealth Cup horse for next year. That's he's focusing on speed, six furlongs. Yeah. So I guess it makes sense, though, why you're going to try that extra bit of distance now rather than waiting for the guineas and taking your chance there to yeah. see if he'll get a mile. Rather and they've than... also got Ancient Truth in there mm. as well, don't they, who's yep. unbeaten. So I think, do they sponsor the race? Is, that, is it still the Dardy Jewers? And I think is maybe Sheikh Mo being in town for uh, Tattersall's book sales, one. Seen, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've probably said we, we run in just as well they have because if they didn't, Aidan would have had a fair old freebie, wouldn't he? Yeah, very much so. So pleased that he's there. And I, I do hope Seagulls 11, of course, performs admirably as well. And I don't think races have really gone his way on his last few. So perhaps he is one who's a little bit overpriced and unconsidered because he is the outlier in terms of connections in yeah. this one. But all three of us, though, are in agreement with the Lion in winter. It's going to take the world of beating. Yeah, even money isn't the most enticing of prices. But as Sam said, mm. I just think it's fair. It'll be interesting to see how the market goes because if, if it is a case that um, Sheikh Mohammed and Godolphin just wanted to run a horse in their own race, maybe is you know symbol of light has he been rushed back a little bit so yeah. uh, we'll see maybe you know it could turn out that you know he goes off four to five who knows yeah potentially we'll see exactly which way the market goes as well but that is our preview then of the Dewhurst again do let us know who you fancy for that group one contest in the comment section below now before we move on to our next race a reminder to like and subscribe on YouTube hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode of this show. Right, nice easy one coming up now. The 340, <laughs> the Cesarewitch, the ha uh, Heritage Handicap, three runs and over, over to mile two. Now, Siva Sands heads the betting for Willie Mullins, who has won this three times between 2018 and 2020. Four to one, the field deck. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, <laughs> just in terms of pace, which is always a good way to start in these races, it looks like there is pace right across the track all Although I don't see it being a, a really strongly run race. Um, you know, there are a couple of horses who like to go forward, but, you know, maybe not kind of an end-to-end -end type gallop. Uh, and 
with regards to the draw, I think as long as you get a decent setup and you get a fair crack at it from the pace, I think the draw you can win from anywhere. The kind of the stats and um, has shown recently, but it's really interesting there. If we could potentially just get up the the, the betting again, the two horses that are to the front of, of the market are both trained by Mullinses. Mm -hmm. um, but they come here off really interesting profiles. Um, you know, the uh, Sea and Sands, I think, comes here off a se um, second run off a 776-day break. And then you've got uh, Jack Event Cavern, who's coming to have a second run off a 459-day break. Now, they are trained by Mullinses, so you've got to give them plenty of respect. But, you know, you do wonder, are they kind of candidates to bounce on their second run back? So uh, I was actually far more interested in um, the Gavin Cromwell horse to... Uh, uh, six and a half of those to the front of the market but I've gone for a bigger price again in uh, Premier Lynch and I hope I haven't butchered the second part of that name but he's three pounds officially well in after a very good run in the trial here uh, three weeks ago and you know he really did travel into the race uh, like he was going to bolt up that day but maybe just wasn't putting it all in at the end I don't know he has finished second in quite a few runs recently so it's interesting the Huey Morrison team have reached for uh, the blinkers now this is him running off I think winning off 76 earlier at Lingfield back in the season so to be fair to him although he hasn't been winning he has been really progressive and we know he handles the track and I was just going back through his pedigree he's actually bred to be a really really smart horse and I think I'm a half sister of his half sister of his did win in blinkers in America so hopefully it's a place that um, um, the blinkers will, will sharpen up we know he's going to stay and I think yeah, he's going to get a, more pace to run at that he did last time out so I'm hoping five pound claimer um, Jack Doherty can get him to run a big race he's three pound well in with a five pound claimer in terms of handicapping, he makes perfect sense. You're ticking a whole load of boxes there. Compelling yes. case made. We're going to go, yeah, Premier Lean? Premier Lean, Lean, Lean. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I was going, it, it's, it's, uh, it's like Dean as in Luca Dean, but with an L. So I'm going to go oh, with Lean. Oh, football, but he's changed his foot, name. football Tracy here. I know, trying to crowbar it in there <laughs> wherever I can. But even he's changed his name pronunciation, apparently, then in the last few weeks as well. Apparently it's now Dean, yeah. Okay. But, uh, well, hopefully so, hopefully we'll be pronouncing it as the winner. By as the, the winner, exactly. That's the way we want to pronounce this. And a nice prize as well. Compelling case made by Dexam. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you can make cases for so many in here. I kind of bucked the trend a little bit because I wanted to be with one of the jumps trainers when you look through the record, but I definitely felt Sea of Sands. I, I don't need to touch that at nine to two. That that's just too short in a in a race where you're going to need a little bit of luck in running. And kind of actually ignored the draw as well. And <laughs> got to go back. I think a little while since there was a what I describe a proper flat trainer that's won this. But I think Simon and Ed Crisford's runner uh, Maxman is a very intriguing player here. Uh, Sean DeBone for me to ride one of the stories probably the slightly unheralded stories of the flat season i think he's a really improved rider uh, he's been doing absolutely wonderful things but this horse that won a racing league contest uh, last time out the record for me that is really interesting for this cracksman horse is the fact that every time you go over two miles or further with him he's won by one occasion uh, so that's four wins and a third and um, definitely seems to excel at a further trip and I think quite interesting is a three-year-old ran eight times because I do think you want a tough horse for this kind of race. And I think why he's only four years old and up against some of the jumpers that would be slightly more established, slightly stronger horses in the sense of they'd be slightly bigger builds. I definitely think he'll be able to mix it with them. I, I thought a double-digit price was incredibly fair about a horse that could just be snuck in right down towards the bottom there for the Crisford duo. I was wondering why you were wearing a yellow shirt today. Well, you've still teamed the East from the Racing League. What a day for the East that was. A 1-2 at Southwell and streaking clear of the remainder. Sam, interestingly, you said there, um, you have to go back a while for the last... Uh, kind of out-and-out out flat trainer to win it. Mm. I think it was uh, Harry Charlton with Withhold, wasn't it? Um, about seven years ago. So mm -hmm. I think nine of the last ten winners of this race have been trained by uh, trainers who are either dual purpose or, or national hunt. Withhold, what a horse he was and um, proper, proper stayer. Just to add on that, if people can go and cast their minds back, that was a hell of a plunge that day. Uh, a certain Mr Bloom, I suspect, may have enjoyed that day going back <laughs> through the annals of time because... I seem to recall that was a monster punt, so it'd be intriguing to see if we have anything similar here. Thankfully for us bookmakers, 
don't think he's got a runner in the race this year. A Tony Bloom plunge, I know. Yeah, it's uh, not something we tend to expect, really, isn't it? But um, right, so then Sam is with Manxman. Then I'm going to side with Spirit Mixer in this. And I ran the trends again for this race, and <laughs> I was I was really frustrated for a long part because I thought it's just going to take me back to Sea of Sands. Here, I was getting more and more towards Sea of Sands, the nine to two favourite and 25 runner two mile two handicap. So I thought, oh great, unoriginality to the fore. However. Ever. Upon the finer details being looked into, just edging out Sea of Sands on the trends was Spirit Mixer at nearly four times the price. A horse who has run plenty this season, which it's something I'm not overly keen on for this race. I prefer freshness for it because it is asking a lot of these sayers to just continue to run well and to perform run after run, especially when you run over two miles four times in one month, which Spirit Mixer did in the month of August. But he does just seem to be thrilled driving off of his racing. So hopefully he's a bit of an anomaly in that sense. And of course, getting back to back wins as we've just seen at Chester over the same course and distance as his penultimate start as well. Coping with the softer ground, effectively running off for just three pound higher in this one, which sees him one pound well in. And I know it's only one pound, but weights and measures over that distance, you know, it does count for plenty. So hopefully trying him at a fair price to deliver his best yet again spirit mixer for me. Now Sam is with Manxman and Deck, just to reiterate. Oh, you're going to make me pronounce that name? Yes, again. I am, because I didn't want to do you're it. You're an awful <laughs> woman. Uh, Premier Linge. Oh, Linge. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just mix up all the I letters. I do apologise for the honour, I'm sorry. <laughs> chuck, all the, chuck all the letters into the mix and see what pronunciation comes out then. It's the way we speak Can't French around here. Do that <laughs> Stitched next up race, royally. Please, next race. <laughs> do let us know who you fancy for this is our rich in the comments section below. Right, jump racing time now at Jepso. Sky Sports racing cameras will be there to bring you all of the action, of course. Silver trophy handicap hurdle on Saturday at 3.20. This race we're going to be focusing in on four-year-olds and over, over two mile three and a half furlongs. Sam, we're back to the jumpers again, but we're not giving you an easy one to kickstart it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean, this was tough, I think, to say the least. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing Chepstow back. It'll be an informative meeting, won't it? I'll be looking forward to watching the coverage on Sky Sports Racing. And uh, it is that time of year where, you know, notebooks have been out and things. And I sort of dusted off some of my notes. And um, I, I felt this was a really open contest. I, I struggle to really want to, to back Doyen Quest, even though I have a few times. I felt like market-wise that was going to end up a little bit short. Um, the horse that I thought could just end up overpriced is... Uh, there's a man that's having an absolute rip-roaring time of things, as he always does at this time of year. It's Nigel Twiston Davis. Mm. At time of recording, he's operating at a nearly a 40% strike rate. So I always like that. I always want trainers that are absolutely flying because you've got varying candidates in here that have got different targets for the rest of the season. But Josh the Bosch, well, Josh the Boss, I should <laughs> say, um, will be a really interesting runner. I'm expecting a big price here. This is an each-way play for me. Um, last seen at Aintree when well beaten uh, by brighter days ahead, but was the outsider of the field that day. And go back through the runs last season and was sent off the 7-4 to four favourite for a race at Exeter. And just a shade disappointing. Just still learning his trade, I think it's fair to say. And, uh, the Ascot run as well went fourth. Uh, definitely there was some market interest that day as well. And looking back through his form, I, I definitely think there's a horse in there that can be competitive off a mark of what we now, 124. The team are in, you know, good form. And I just felt that was kind of my indication. I'd want to play small stakes each way for, for this kind of race. And I felt that just probably be one that might just be overlooked in the market. Yeah, he, he has been, hasn't he, then? And like you say, when we talk about yard form this time of year, that does tend to translate at the start of the year as yeah. well. And Nigel Twiston Davis, we know his horses, no matter what kind of layoff they've had, no matter what summer break, they are just fit and ready to go first time up. So Josh for boss for Sandak. Yeah, competitive stuff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, probably plenty of pace on as well here. A couple of good few horses who like to go forward. So, um, you know, Having a horse like Josh the Boss for a trainer who's got a string forward could uh, be interesting. I didn't think it was maybe the best renewal. I think the top weight is carrying 138, yep. or is rated 138. But we've had winners of this race in the past rated 149, 148, 142, and 141. So it depends on what way you want to kind of cut it. Is it is there, are the classy horses at the top of the weights going to have a, maybe a bit of a class edge, or did you want to maybe go for a younger kind of horse who could progress? And I went for the latter option because I went for
for uh, into the park here for your old governor, uh, Philip Hobbs <laughs> and uh, Johnson White. Mm. And the, half, the, the other part of the reason that I went with him as well, there's quite a few horses in here who have um, applied their trade over fences. And I just wonder, are they maybe getting prep runs in here for races like the Paddy Power at the Cheltenham Festival and, and other intermediate trips? But uh, he's a nice horse, this fella. He was quite highly strong last year, uh, but he seems to have settled down. And this is the day at Newbury where he absolutely bolted up from the front. Now, he, I think he did win a taunt in his next start as well. Um, I think he sat in mid-div, so tactically he's versatile as well. And what I will say is the attheraces.com jump site launched this week and I did a little feature on there where I spoke to 20 different jockeys and got a horse to follow from them. And I spoke to Gut Hall Nolan and he's a lovely lad. Uh, he gave me loads on the phone. Uh, I was probably burning the ear off him, but he, uh, he was a really nice guy. And this was the horse he gave us to follow. And he said to me, I asked him, you know, why do you, do you like this horse? He said, mentally, he's after settling down loads. Mm -hmm. He had a really good summer. He strengthened up. And I just think now that he, uh, mentally he's settled down, uh, I think we're going to see an awful lot more of him. He also said the better the race, the, the better it'll suit him because he's a high cruiser and he likes to travel and he's unexposed over this trip. So hopefully it's a good start for that little feature uh, with this horse. So yeah, that's who I'm with in the, the first big jumps race of the season. I looked at that little feature and I was I was going through, because obviously just fascinated in general, really well mm. put together as well. But I did click onto, onto um, Mihol's horse then with Into the Park. And I mean, he gave you loads, didn't yeah, he? No, he? a real chunk of he work. He did, yeah. Like uh, most of the jockeys are very good. Mm. And, um, you know, he was a really friendly guy. So um, yeah, I hope that the season goes well for him. And his name is Mihol, not Michael, as the old Brits like to call him. He's a good Irish man. So, yeah, best of luck to him for the season. And, um, yeah. yeah, he's, uh, as I said, with your old governor. Yeah, and, and Michal's an absolute star, so I wasn't surprised that he gave you so much mm. um, to go at as well then. So hopefully he's rewarded with that. Maybe not in this race, though, because okay. so, <laughs> you talk about the two angles for this race. And I agree, when you see that we our two uh, joint top weights in here are both carrying 138 or running off a mark of 138 with 12 stone then on their back. And it is in comparison to recent renewals because of that bracket then for the top rating I do think that class is more likely to come to the fore mm. and Krabili for all that he could well be being prepped then for a bigger target back over fences I still think he can take full advantage of this and I think that Connections will really want to take advantage of this as well now I was toying between Krabili and Doyen Quest who of course is getting lumps of weight from Krabili but Krabili I just think he can give the weight away carrying the 12 stone class act back to hurdles I just hope he won't be on done by the front runner bias of Cheps though because it's not as bad on the hurdle track as it is over fences admittedly but it's always going to be a concern for him but of course last season was a really good one for him second in the plate at the Cheltenham Festival running off a mark two pound lower than he carried there this time around so it did look a good opportunity for him to take advantage of his lower I remember that mark. day at Cheltenham he was coming to beat Ginny's Destiny who was obviously ended up being a grade one novice mm -hmm. and he uh, I think he took a little tumble to be fair to him um, he could be one you know given he did have a few jumping frailties over fences that uh, um, you know hurdles could suit him as well yeah that's exactly just to get that confidence back again even though he got it back on track after that yeah. fall didn't he and he won that it was at Exeter of a small runner novices chase yeah, which, like three runners and yeah, yeah where yeah, kind yeah. of the race fell apart and yeah. it just yeah I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily know if that was ideal at that point then for him to be going and winning that and uh, and at the plate in the plate though he still ran an absolute blinder I'm hoping back over hurdles would be the way to go then with him. So Cribilly for me, Josh for Boss for Sam and Deck is with Into the Park. Right, time for Deck and I to get our skates on and head over to the sky pad. Sam, you say exactly where you are. <laughs> Right, the all-important part then of the weekend are best bets and the Bet Victor trade is going to be boosting something for us. So we're going to bring Sam Boswell back in again then. So Sam, you're going to enlighten us for what we're going to have boosted this week. Uh, yes, uh, it will be the naps, I promise. I've just got to disappear around to the trading desk and give them all a bit of a nudge. But they will be on site as ever. And obviously last week, Kate's boosted nap managed to win. So fingers crossed. We can put a few more into uh, into that category this week. Yeah, hopefully then we get a few more of those boosts taken full advantage of. But more importantly, Sam, what is your nap of this weekend? Yeah, uh, a busy weekend of racing, isn't it? And trying to stay on theme with the jumps returning. I'm going to nap Hexum. something up at Hexham. Goodness. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Wendigo goes for Bet Victor Brand Ambassador Jamie Snowden and Gavin Sheen. Uh, his career to date so far 
has yielded some impressive bumper efforts. But if you go and look at the Hexham win, um, there's definitely some substance to this form. I appreciate people sometimes aren't as uh, aren't as keen to go through in details, but that Hexham and Catterick win definitely had some some sort of I say substance to it that will put this horse definitely above average. If I can get even money or bigger. I think I'll be definitely getting involved. Uh, my next best is going to be Skelet. That Rafe Beckett uh, form just seems to be nice and strong this time of year. Uh, three-year-olds in that race do particularly well. And I, I really, really think she'll be uh, a significant mover on the day. I think that seven to one will come under a bit of pressure. Now, my long shot probably Oof. takes a bit of explaining, I think it's fair <laughs> to say. Um, we're certainly shooting for the stars, aren't we? But Joseph O'Brien's been in reasonable form this time of year. And let's not forget, you go back through the form book. This horse was one of the biggest SP prices I've ever seen in Ireland previously uh, when he won the Irish Azar, which at a whopping 150 to 1. He'd shown very little to date up to that point. And there's been a bit of water under the bridge since then. And this season, his best efforts have actually come uh, in maiden hurdles. was a bit disappointing when trying to make it back-to-back -back wins uh, in the Irish Azar, which last time out. But I definitely think there's a race in this horse once again. He's definitely a quirky type as well. But having popped up once before at a big <laughs> price, I do wonder a mark of 98 could just be workable. And obviously, jumps trainers, Joseph's very capable dual-purpose trainer, have won this race on several occasions. So like I say, Malangan straight, a real shot there, a bit of an each-way play, one with those extra places that you get in these big handicaps. And uh, I definitely felt... Could just bring a surprise, Kate. All right, a snip at a price of 66 to 1 in comparison to 150. You're taking the short price then <laughs> about McGallan straight, Sam. But yeah, like I say, compelling case made that he may well be able to follow that up at another big price. Deck, your own best bets, please. Yes, uh, the nap for me this week has uh, already been discussed in the show. It's going to be uh, the line in winter in the Dewhurst. A uh, really fascinating race. Hope and Bally Doyle make it a good test of stamina and drag the class and pace out of symbol and light uh, and see the line in winter uh, win comfortably. Uh, the next best then we're going to go to York and it's going to be Bolster for the informed Carl Burke team. I thought this boy ran a cracker last time out in a warm handicap at Newbury in heavy ground. He'll have no problem with conditions at York and I thought he just shaped like needing the race a little bit off, uh, off an extended layoff. So he will be the next best for me. And then the long shot's going to be Premier League in the Cesarowicz over at Newmarket as we already discussed in the show. He'll have no problem staying this trip uh, for the Huey Morrison team. Just hope the first time blinkers can sharpen him up uh, a little bit more. But don't forget Shagpile in that race. 66 to 1 about a horse you could easily forgive her last time out run. And being a bit cheeky, bit going with two, but what are they going to do? Nothing. Best of luck to you, Dak. And you are allowed two long shots then uh, if they are at those prices as well. Now, my own nap is going to be Silver Peak and a race we haven't actually discussed. This is for Group 3 Autumn Stakes over a mile. It comes up at Newmarket at 2.25. Three to one. Now, it's second favourite because, because Delacroix is currently the favourite for Aidan O'Brien, but he has a poor record in this race, not from 14 in the last 10 years, rather than Charlie Appleby, who trains Silver Peak, has won the past four renewals, even prior to that, uh, a horse still in the Godolphin Blue one, that being Military March, trained by Saeed Bin Sirul. Charlie Appleby also won it in 2017 with Gayef, so straight away, before anything else, you just have to look what Charlie Appleby or Godolphin has sent to the race. They're only represented by Silver Peak this year. He's done a little wrong in his two starts. Fourth on debut at Kempton and improved effort last time out at Haydock then to win over a trip of one mile. So I thought that he was a good price to take at three to one. Now Spirit Mixer is going to be my next best bet in the Cesaro Rich now for all of the aforementioned reasons thriving off of his racing. And for all I do think Sea of Sands has a great chance. He's priced up accordingly but I prefer the price about Spirit Mixer in such a competitive race as ever. And Orazio, 14 to 1, is actually probably as short as I'd want to go, to be honest, at the uh, in the 240 at York, the Sprint Trophy Handicap, another heritage handicap that is on at the weekend. This time over six furlongs. Loads of characters we know loads about in this race. But Orazio, very much a win or bus horse, though, I mm. feel, because you know that he's treated enough to go very, very well in here. But for the last twice, he has pretty much bombed in his races. And it was reported on his penultimate start that the jockey said he, he stopped very quickly. So, you know he's well-treated. 
if he is, then he's going to go very, very close. If he is not in the same order that he was earlier on in the season, then he could well just uh, be a busted flush then in that one. But I'm willing to chance him at 14 to 1 all the same. Right. That is everything from us on this week's show. So a big thanks to Deck and to Sam, clearly, then, for tuning in as well. Hopefully you have a lovely rest of your time out there, Sam. And Deck, best of luck to you for your Thank bets you. this week. Best of luck to you at home with your own bets this week. And we'll be back at the same time next week to preview Champions Day at Ascot.